What's up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another daily vlog. What we're going to be doing today is making the handle scales for the farrier's rasp knife. What are we going to be using? We're going to use a little bit of zebra wood. We're going to use the rest of that black palm and red vulcanized paper liners. It looks kind of orange from the, on the camera, but these are red. And I know that a lot of y'all are used to using G10 vulcanized paper though. You should think about getting it and trying it out. It's nice because all you have to do is cut it with scissors. It buffs and polishes just like G10. These are absolutely amazing, really easy to work with. So think about getting these. I'll leave a link for where I get these in the description if you want to go check them out, order them. They're not expensive, they're really cheap. So try that out. But we are going to be taking all three of these things and we're going to make an awesome set of handle scales for it. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it throughout the whole process. We're going to make it awesome. Let's go ahead, jump into it, get these scales made. What we're going to go ahead and do here is take the knife, put it on the vulcanized paper liners, make sure it's the right size before we start. And then we're going to take one of the handle scales and we're going to make sure we have excess because we don't want to cut this exactly to the size of the scales themselves. We want to be able to, I guess you could say fudge it a little bit whenever we go for the glue up. It's good to have them a little oversized just in case they shift on you. So that's the two pieces for the scales and the one long piece for the divider between the two pieces of scale material. And we get to just cut it up with scissors. It's one of my favorite things about this material. We got our two scale pieces and then our one divider piece. And it's gonna go in between it just like this right here. So this gives you a rough idea of what we're going for. Now we're going to go ahead and use these two pieces and figure out how much we need to cut off of the zebra wood. It just gives us a rough idea. And we're going to take this and go ahead and go over to the bandsaw. We're going to cut through both of these at one time. It doesn't have to be an exact cut. We're just going to cut this and basically what we're going to be left with is almost the same exact amount of the black palm that we have. So I'll be able to use the main piece for the scales and this leftover piece just like I'm using for the black palm. All we're doing right now is just squaring them up so that whenever we go to do our glue up, everything is flat and even. We just repeat the same process on the zebra wood that we just did on the black palm. Now the next step is to square up the part where it's going to seam together with the other handle scale material. So where both the black palm and the zebra wood are going to touch, we want to make sure those are square so we don't have any weird gapping. So I marked it, top one and top two so that both of these pieces have a, a one on them and the, the other ones have a two on them. And then I drew an arrow so we knew which side was supposed to meet because only one side of those were squared up. Now we're gonna go ahead and sand everything. I'm just using a 150 grit. It's nothing super aggressive. It's just enough to get everything flat and scuffed up. And we're going to run over everything, not just the paper liners. Now it's time to take the acetone. And all we're doing with the acetone is just wiping the things clean. We're not trying to get the acetone to soak through anything. We're just using it as a cleaner. The 
somebody suggested this right here to use wax paper and it worked amazingly. Of course we're using JB Weld 5 minute epoxy like I pretty much always do. And in the previous video I said that I was going to try out a different epoxy. I do plan on it yet, but I have not run out of this. Doesn't make any sense for me to order it just yet, but I plan on ordering a few different brands of epoxy and trying them out. Now, whenever we're applying this, we're just doing a real thin layer. We don't want a ton of squeeze out. We want to make sure that we're just putting enough on there to make the bond happen. You don't have to put a whole bunch on there and just get it to where it's real messy. And if you remember from the last time I did this, two things I focused on. One, having gloves. The last time I did this, I had no gloves, so it got really messy. Plus, on the piece of vulcanized paper that goes in between the two scales, the last time I did this, it raised up. So I want to make sure that I keep this pressed down while I'm doing this clamping process. So I go back and I check multiple times to make sure that that piece is exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that the person that suggested doing the wax paper underneath this was a genius. It lifted straight up. It was absolutely so much easier than what I was doing before. And that little piece, that little divider between the two, or the spacer if you want to call it that, between the two pieces of handle scale material, it was nice and flush. It did not lift up this go around. So, focusing on it did its job. And I really like the way these handle scales are turning out. But there's still more work to be done. We're going to go ahead and use the bandsaw to cut off all the excess. I don't like gumming up my belts with this particular stuff. Uh, I would rather do all of this on the bandsaw and just make it a lot easier. It makes quick work of it. Now it's time to go ahead and square up the rest of it. So what we did the first time we squared we squared up everything that was going to be touching the vulcanized paper liners. So the flat piece, the divider, we squared up everything that was going to touch those. Now it's time to square up the outside of the handle scales and make them an actual piece of handle scale material that's nice and even. So we're squaring up all of the outsides right now just to make them nice and even like it is right there. Then we're going to need to do another phase of squaring, and that is having them both together and just fine tuning it to make them to where both handle scales are matching. And we just clamped them together as close as they could get off of the rough shaping that we did. And now we're doing that final sanding and shaping to make sure they're all square. This just makes putting them onto the knife and getting everything measured out and all that stuff, it makes that step so much easier if you spend the time doing this. Now that we got that part done, it's time to go ahead and square the flats of this. Now you want these square because you're going to be setting the knife on there and getting your shape drawn out. You're going to be doing your 
pinholes, all of those things are only going to be as straight and true as the outside of these handle scales. So if these have a bunch of waves in them, your pinholes are not going to be straight. They're going to be weird and wonky and you don't want that because it makes your glue up a lot harder. So we're just squaring everything up and making them one flat plane. We end up with scales just like this. Nice and smooth and even. Now this step right here is not one that everybody has to do. I particularly do it because it makes everything else way easier. Some people just do double sided tape and attach them together. I like doing this because I like to be able to open the scales up and butterfly them. But it's just putting a piece of uh, painter's tape on the outside of it and you end up with something just like this. They're attached together, they stay really true, and it's really easy to work with. There we go, set of handle scales. Well guys, that wraps up today's daily vlog, and we have handle scales. Like, nice looking, great grain. You see that grain goes all the way through. I love the way that this looks on here. So we have black palm, zebra, then red vulcanized paper linings. Now let's recap what we did here. We made sure that we got everything cut for the size that we need and then we went ahead and we squared up everything that meets the vulcanized paper linings so we squared up the back side here we squared up right here where those are going to seam together and then we went ahead got them sanded got them glued up and once we had them glued up and they had cured we went ahead and then squared everything else you know we had to square all of the other pieces this just makes it a lot easier whenever it comes to putting the blade on here and then having to drill holes and do all that stuff you want everything square so that it's not like off kilter a little bit and then your holes start drilling through sideways on the drill press you want it all square so that everything goes through square so that's what we did there guys thank y'all for coming by and checking this out if you would give this video a thumbs up Share this video or a video that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And if you have not yet, you know, hit that little subscribe button right there. And turn on the notification bell so you get notified for whenever I actually attach these to this. Guys, thank y'all for coming by again. Thank y'all for checking this out. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs>